welcome. My name is Dr. Aldwan Tart, and right now we're going to talk about eight questions to ask when dating to avoid getting hurt. I want to make sure that you're able to pick the best person. Now, this is geared towards, I'm be honest, this is geared towards the ladies, but men, come along for the ride because we matter too. Have you ever been in a relationship, family? I see y'all coming in, you're jumping on live, you're watching this. I appreciate you being here. Here's what we're focusing on right now. You know, um, have you ever dated someone or been in a relationship with someone and uh, you believe they're the right person for you? Or maybe they go through the right motions or you met their representative and your heart connects with them. And then you find out later they're not who they said they were or they are not a good fit for you, but you already like them and you find yourself having to balance. Do I leave this person, break up with this person, start a whole new relationship with this person? I wish I would have known up front what I know now. I might have made a different decision. Has anyone been there? I've, I've been there. I've been there. I've been in a relationship with someone and she was uh passionate and she was sweet and she was uh loving uh until she got mad until she got mad and i wish i would have asked her uh one of the questions i'm gonna have you ask it's gonna be question number eight it's gonna be the number eight question i'm gonna ask y'all today all right it's gonna be question number eight i wish i would have asked her about this because had I asked her about this, it would have been a whole different conversation and I would have decided whether this is what I wanted to sign up for. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you learn something in the marriage, in the relationship, you know, with friends, with family? Uh, and this goes for guys, too. Like you're dating her and you realize, oh, man, had I known I had to deal with this and this was an issue for them. Had I known that before I caught feelings, I might have said I'm not equipped for this. You feel me? All right. So um, it's 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 it's, it's going to be a good conversation. And I see someone saying, hey, you know what? I'm Muslim. I've gone from Muslim to Christianity. I, I, I wonder if, uh, you know, my, my community is interested in this conversation, regardless of your religious background or whom you believe in or what you believe in. As for me, you know, I'm a Christ follower and I respect what you believe because I want us to meet. I want us to bridge and have a real realistic conversation. This is going to apply. These are eight questions you need to ask when dating. You can even ask these questions if you're in relationship, because how many of you know you can drift apart? And you don't even know me anymore. All right. So without further ado, because I know your time is valuable. Right. Uh, and Angelica, I see you. I appreciate you chiming in. I appreciate y'all buying badges and things that you do. But let's dive in. Eight questions you should ask when dating men or women. You put it put in the blank to avoid getting hurt. All right. Number one. Number one. I wrote a real list for y'all. All right. I want to know what your mindset is about dating and relationships. Number one, I want to know what your mindset is about dating and relationships. I know you're saying, all right, Doc Star, what do you mean? All right. I want I want to know like how how you approach relationships and what you believe about it. When we're dating, do you believe that do you believe that um, dating is something that you want to do? Right. All right. Um, around relationships. Do you believe that being in a relationship means that you cut everyone else off? Or does that mean that you organically find someone you like and we're dating multiple people until we identify that we want to be together? And then how would how would we communicate exclusivity? Would I need to communicate that to you? Would you communicate that to me? So if you ask these questions up front, it's not it's not awkward. It's not awkward. You get to ask these questions up front to find your person, find your fit. When it comes to dating and relationships, like um, do do you struggle or do you succeed in these relationships? Like what would your ex exes say about you? Right. When you're in relationships, do they become your number one? Are you able to focus on school and work at the same time? I need to know your mindset around relationships. If we have a bad day. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a question I wish I could ask some of my exes. If we have a bad day, we agree to disagree, right? What is your take on what do you do in a relationship? What do y'all do? Come on, comment. If we have a bad day, we have an argument, we disagree, we have a bad moment, what do you do? I want to know your mindset around it. All right. Do you believe in not going to bed mad? Now, I know y'all are not cohabitating. 
you know, and if you are, you're okay, you know, but, but I'm talking about dating, right? Uh, do you believe in being the first to apologize? Do you believe that it should be mutual apologize? Uh, apo do you believe that we should have like a cool off period of a couple of hours and then just drop it and come back to it? Like, what's your mindset on making relationships work when it gets tough? Do you just quit and shut down and break down? Or do you say, I want to work it out, but we just need some time? Are y'all feeling me, family? Are y'all getting it? These are questions we need to ask before I see peaceful solutions saying mutual. It needs to be mutual. I'm with you. I don't want, I've been in a relationship where I had to do all the apologizing every time. Now, what's the possibility that I'm wrong all the time? And in this particular relationship, I actually was right more than I was wrong. I don't mean like, 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 I don't mean from a sense of entitlement. Like, I really did have more relationship skills than she did, right? All right, like, look, we can agree to disagree. Or, hey, I don't want to argue. Let's pray about it where she'd shut down and get upset and do all this acting. Now, I, I didn't do that to that degree, right? So I just found myself apologizing just to keep the peace. And because I thought that's what I was supposed to do because she was unable to maintain herself. And that did not work out. I didn't know what your mindset is. Do you believe in getting in the, in the mud with me? And if our relationship's in the mud, do you believe in digging it out the mud too? All right? Uh, Lala is saying, uh, cool off period, then revisit. How, how long should that cool off period be, family? How long should it be? Right? You need to you need to actually have that conversation because how many of you know you can have a cool off period that's too long for the other person? So you can have a three cool off period that's three days. You can be like, hold on, you ignored me for three days? It took you three days? And then you can have a cool off period that's too short. Hey, you say cool off 15 minutes. I was just starting to calm down. And here you come back again. You just want to keep noise. You need to actually have a pre-conflict plan. And being able to talk about what that cool off period would look like. Hey, I'm gonna go out for an hour. Does that work for you? I'm gonna, you know, let's let's visit revisit this thing in the morning. Or, hey, we don't go to bed mad. Let's resolve this right before we go to bed. All right. Uh, I see. I see Grace saying she'd ask for space and maybe process it in a, another set time. Uh, someone says, hey, don't don't shut down and stop talking until I cool off. Hey, that's being real, you know. Uh, LT is, is, is saying that, man, Jules is saying, I believe in taking some time to have a little space and set time and talk to address. Look, look, look at this mature audience, right? I love this mature audience. And y'all are being real, right? Because, you know, we can't just shut down. Uh, that's on us. We need relationships. You can't shut down and ignore the other person because you're upset for too long. It has to be within the window that doesn't make them feel rejected or abandoned or upset. Are you going too far? There has to be an integration uh, a, a mutuality. There has to be evidence that we're in a relationship, right, fam? Like there's me and there's you, and that's how we decide what we're gonna do. It's not just the way I want to do it or the way you want to do it. It doesn't work that way, right? I see y'all. Paulette says a cool off period works for me. Uh, get my thoughts together and process. My wife is the same way. Someone, uh, someone says, uh, step back and calm down, then come back at it later. That's good. All right, doing a disagreement. Make sure you never yell a curse. See, I, I'm with it. Well, I like it. I'm gonna go back to this one. I was gonna go to number two, and I will. Peaceable solution says, let's take a timeout when necessary. Let's just pause right there, uh, just for a minute. A timeout is good because you know it's called emotional flooding. An emotional flooding is when our heart beats above 100 beats a minute. Whenever we get to 100 beats a minute, we're going to say something or do something we're going to regret. Why? You know, our our flight, fight, our freeze system is queued up at that point because we feel like this a conversation is now a threat to us. Right. A threat to us. And so I would start responding like you're a threat. See, I'm going to shut down. I'm going to freeze. I'm going to fight. I'm going to flight. Let's before we get there. Time out before I say something I regret, sister. Right. Because you didn't say the wrong thing. You're making me angry. I'm interrupting. Um, I listen to a word you say. Let's just take a time out, cool down, get below 100 beats a minute and come back to it. Right. Now, if you really want to be technical, there's these little thing called galvanic skin responses. All right. And now you can even have it on your on your watches. I'm not wearing one right now. You know, shout out Tally and Twine, though, black owned watch company. But they have the Apple watches. All right. Uh, the Fitbits and whatever they whatever they call right where they can monitor your heartbeat. You know, you might just want to cue that thing up, you know, and see where you are. Right. That way you don't say something you regret and you'll know that it's coming, you know. Um, and then someone says, what if both of you cool off, but do not revisit the combo due to getting escalated again? Uh, you, you you have to. You don't have relationship skills. Right. If you, 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 don't, you The worst thing you can be in a relationship is an avoider. And if you have two avoiders, you can't resolve the conflict. And what happens is that they brew and that resentment is there. So I think the best way to do it is to calm down and then come back to what you agree on. 
All right, we agree that we should both listen to each other, right? We agree that we should both be happy. We agree that uh, our relationship right now is in the tank, and we neither one of us agree on what to do. All right, let's start right there. And then the next thing you want to do is start soft. All right, let's keep our tone down and maybe get some uh, chamomile tea, take some calm, whatever. And then let's come back at this, right? Or maybe we get a third party mediator to sit down with us. Let's go to counseling and get his or her uh, informed opinion. Or let's just get some, some people we trust, right? Some marriage mentors, relationship mentors, people we trust with their calmness, a wise, someone who's wise and elder to sit down to help us mediate the situation, right? I see you, Roller Girl. I appreciate it. I know Vegas. I know that's where you reside. Uh, Shanae, I see you. I, I'm glad that y'all are here. Right? I'm glad everyone is here. E exquisite, tasty. I appreciate you coming in, Mad Jules. All right. All right. So number one, number one, what's your mindset about dating and relationships? Get as much out of that. Number two, do you want what I want? Do you want what I want? This, this is a big one. This is a boundary conversation. Do you want what I want? Now, first of all, you have to know what you want. Right. So what I mean by that is, look, I am uh, at, at an as I'm, I'm, I'm just using language. y'all. I'm at an age where I will, I'm looking for commitment and they found that commitment. They're looking for marriage and that they like to have children within the next three to three to five years. That's a great statement. Do you want do you want that? I mean, up front, I know you all like, oh, I don't want to scare them off. But why would you get? feelings with someone who doesn't want commitment. They just want to kick it and chill. All right. They don't want to get married or they want to get married in 10 years, seven years. And they don't even know. They don't believe in the institution of marriage. And then they don't want children. Right. Why would I date you? I know that's brutal. I don't have time for you. You don't want what I want. We can be cool. We can be friends. We can be believers. We can study the word together. We can go roller skating together, right? We, we, we can watch the Falcons game, right? We, we, can, we can do it. But ain't no need of my heart being attached to yours, girl, all right? If you don't want what I want. If you don't want, and that could go anything. And I'm talking about the relationship. I don't mean like, do you want what I want in life? But I would like to have a conversation. And we're going to get to that. But I really want to know, do you want the same thing I want out of this relationship? Are you open to real love? Are you open to, uh, are, it could be the other way. Are you open for us just kicking it and organically seeing where things go? Because my desire to marriage is really based upon my income, my ability to provide, my my time to heal. Do you want what I want? Can we be on the same page? Are you going to be rushing me? Are you going to feel like I betrayed you when I'm trying to tell you up front what my pace is? Y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? And again, y'all, if you are tuning in, the topic is eight questions to ask when dating to avoid getting hurt. And I'm slanting this towards the ladies, but this also applies to us as men because we're real. We're real human beings too. We're human beings. We, 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 we're not as savage as the internet might make you make us appear, right? All right. I, all right. So y'all got it. All right. Oh, I see. I see y'all feeling that. Do you want what I want? I was in a relationship with someone and she didn't want what I wanted. I wanted and I know what I asked for was weird, right? I was in grad school, so I pretty much was married to getting my Ph.D. off. But I didn't want to be lonely and I don't believe in plain ladies. I don't believe in playing them. So I was just honest. I was like, look, I want us to be um, kind of exclusive without all the emotion, right? Like we're going to go our separate ways. When I get my degree, you're going to go off to med school or dental school, or law school, and I'm going to go off to be a psychologist in California and then return to Atlanta. I already have my life plan, right? And that may not be yours, right? And I probably won't want marriage right after at 22 years old. Well, 26 years old when I 27 when I get my PhD. I'm, I, I probably I don't know if I want that immediately. I might want to just get my bearings and get started with career. But are you cool with us dating uh, exclusively? Like when I see you, I see you. When you see me, you see me. Are you cool with that? Right. That's weird. Right. Like, OK, you want exclusivity without the title. But I want you to want what I want to be on the same page. Right. And, and, and a couple of. A couple of women wanted that, but others didn't. And I had to take ownership. That was weird emotionally. So I get my feelings in it. And I know we're casual, but the more time we spend together, I like you. But then it has no future. Like the more we talk, I, I at least want to have a conversation about where you might move, might where you might do internship. For me, it was California, Atlanta. It, there was no negotiation. 
or at that point in time, I was already going to those places. That was my career trajectory, right? Because believe it, this is fun fact for y'all. When I first started, I uh, gang violence um, and aggression expert, and I still am. I just don't do a lot of that work today. It's more relationship and counseling based. But I knew I wanted to go out to Inglewood. I knew I wanted to go out to South Central, right? And I knew I wanted to return to Atlanta to Kirkwood because that was my training and working with these high risk populations. And if you don't want that, if you're trying to take me off that, let's not get our feelings in it. Y'all feel me? All right. Now, most of them were able to go with that, but but you get it. And I want y'all to be upfront to make sure that no one's feelings gets hurt. All right. I know I missed a couple of uh, of, the, of these comments. Right. Um, yeah. But I, y'all get it. Right. 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 So someone said, would that open the door for manipulation? It would. It would. But when you ask someone if they want what you want, I would let them go first. See, to avoid the manipulation, just say, hey, you know what? I want to know if you want what I want in a relationship. But first, just out of courtesy, this is a game for y'all. Out of courtesy, especially if you're a woman, I want you to go first as, as you know, as a man. All right. As a, as a man, you can say out of courtesy, ladies first. I want to know what you want to see if it matches. Because if you know you're not going to manipulate, why not ask them first if you're worried about the person you're with manipulating you? Right. And someone that says, what if they show all these interests and you get married and have kids and now they want to play the streets and still have the benefits of a wife at home and kids without the wife? At that point, you have to draw a boundary. All right. And a boundary is saying you violated my standards. Right. Like you violated the agreement that we have. Think about boundaries as a property line. You've come all the way on my property and I asked you to respect the property. But now you like a dog peeing on the yard that's not yours. and You're messing up my grass. Right. You have to set a boundary and say, hey, this doesn't work for me. And then you have to be prepared to enforce your boundary. A lot of times we complain, but we don't enforce it. You know, I got a speeding ticket. I got uh, three speeding tickets in 45 days. I sped through the same city on the way to work three times in 45 days. And I got a fat third ticket and I had to go to defensive driving school. I'm going to be honest. All right. And everyone in my family lost car insurance because of me. And it wasn't because I'm a speed demon. I was late to work. And the judge was like, look, man, you don't respect the city. You can stay with us for a day. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to stay. I'm sorry. I'm not disrespecting your city. On I am late. I need to do a better job. And that's what's happened these last 45 days. You will never see me. Y'all think that was like 10 or 12 years ago. I have not sped since. Now, what's the point of that story? They needed to enforce their boundary three times on me. Ticket one, ticket two, ticket three, insurance company uh, dropping us. Defensive driving school. Wife was like, "Where's all, why is all this money coming out the account in the last 60 days going towards the city of Avondale? Right. What what is this? Why? I, and our mother in law was our insurance agency lost a boatload of business from us. That's five, six consequences that had to be enforced against me to get me to slow down, even though that is the law. There's some people that will listen if you enforce your boundaries. Some of us are too soft. I love you. But you're too soft with enforcing your boundaries and we do talking and no enforcing. Now, I didn't say punishment. I didn't say an ultimatum, even though sometimes it does come down to that change or I'm gone because I don't want to die in this. I don't want to hurt in this. I, I can't take this anymore. But it's really about just enforcing your own standards. Right. Doesn't the bank do that? Doesn't the bank do that? If, if your credit is below what they want to deal with, they're going to enforce we need a 700 in order to give you this loan for the car or the house. Doesn't a realtor do that? In order to show you the house, you're going to have to pre-qualify for this amount. You want me to show you a house at this amount at 450? You only qualify for 415. I'm not going to show you a house at 450 and waste my time and you only qualify for 415. That's just enforcing the boundary. I won't show you the house unless you come with some more money. Get more funding, uh, get more, get the bank to pre-qualify you for more, then I'll show you that. That's not punishment. All right. Y'all feel me? All right. Someone said I met a 50 year old lawyer, 34. So excited. But this man has never been married. And that's a red flag because uh, because who have you loved? And it was actually like I'm supposed to be just be easy. I'm going to address that really quickly. I'm going to get that. I'm going to go um, go a lot faster. Go to number three. All right. Really quickly, like just because someone's never been married doesn't mean that that they're flawed. It is hard to find love out here. Right. And it could be that they put love second or they've tried love or they've seen it. And now they've had or something has happened and they, they really want to get into it. Right. 
But but what you should be cautious of is a person that's been with themselves for 50 years is going to be very difficult for them to compromise, for them to consider your feelings, for them to be considerate because they've been out of practice. That's in general. That's in general. Right. But a person who's been considerate, maybe they live with others, maybe they're good at work. We want to make sure that they're considerate and they're good to you. Does that make sense? We want to make sure that they're considerate and they're good to you because a relationship is me plus you equals we. Not your way or my way. It's our way. Right? Yeah. So y'all get it. So someone says I have to set, you know, boundaries and it doesn't feel good, but actually works out in my favor. Uh, but now they don't want to talk to me anymore. Well, that means that they never plan on integrating you into their life. Sometimes we have to let people go. Right. Like like for like, for instance, the thing was all state, all state. Let me go. Now, I'm team progressive right now. I'm a diamond member of progressive. They're not sponsoring any of this. Right. I'm a diamond member because that was so long ago. We have an excellent driving record. Right. Um, we have a lot of stuff insured with them. So they're happy. Right. But all they had to let me go because I didn't go by their rules. I look like a liability to them. Three tickets in 45 days. Come on. This brother must be a train wreck. Right. They enforce it. And I learned. Right. So sometimes you have to do that. All right. You're not late. TDN. Here we are. All right. Number three. Um, what kind of lover or partner are you? These are the questions you want to ask when eight questions to ask when dating. To, to avoid getting hurt and make sure you have the right fit. All right. Uh, what kind of lover or partner are you? I want to know what kind of how do you love? Someone asked you that, y'all. What would you say? How do you love? Right, if someone asks me that, I'm going to say, look, I'm going to listen to you. I'm a listener. I'm a listener, and then I'm a talker, and I'm a talker too, right? So my love language is I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to pay attention to you. I'm, I am also a fixer. If you're asking me what kind of lover I am, I'm a fixer, all right? So I'm a man. I'm a psychologist, y'all. I'm a minister. Y'all know I'm a fixer. If you have a problem, I'm going to try to fix it. All right. It ain't even my issue. Right. If you tell me that your sister is overseas and, and uh, she doesn't have the money to come home for the holidays, I'm thinking about how can I help her? Does that mean I put a little bit on the ticket? Does that mean I start researching last minute tickets? Does that mean we trans get the family to have a family group chat to donate Sky Miles so that we can get little sister home? That's who I am as a lover. Girl, if you have a problem, I'm trying to fix it. All right. We need to know. I need to know what kind of love or partner you are, because one, one is this is an opportunity for the person you're dating. We need to see what kind of skills they are. This is an asset. This is like them asking, what do you bring to the company? What are your skills? What kind of manager are you? What kind of sales rep are you? Uh, what kind of doctor are you? What kind of attorney are you? I need to know, are you willing to get in the mud with me and, and fight if the other person don't want to fight fair? All right. What kind of attorney are you? All right. I, I see you. I see you anointed. All right. Voice. I see you. I appreciate y'all. All right. So I need to know what kind of lover or partner you are. And I want you all to know what kind of lover and partner you are, because I need to see if that's a fit. Are you the kind of person that tells me how you feel? Or do you keep that inside? I'm the kind of person I need to know why you feeling me. I want. I feel you because you listen to me. I feel you because you are attracted to me. I, 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 you know, I'm feeling you because you consider my feelings, and I like, I like that little thing you do with your eyes. I need to know why you like. I need to get, hear words of validation as to why you feeling me, and I also need to hear appreciation. Are you that kind of lover? Are you that kind of lover? You're going to open up your mouth and communicate. Uh, what kind of lover are you? are you? Are you someone that when you get mad, can, 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 you, can, you, stand in the, can you stand the rain? Or do you tap out? What kind of lover are you? Are you one of them resilient lovers? All right. Or do you tap out? Or am I going to be the one fighting for the relationship, trying to duct tape this thing, staple this thing together, and meanwhile, you out? No, I, I need to know what kind of lover and partner you are up front do you compromise all right y'all get it that's number three that's number three number four Woo! let's get to it i need to know what trust means to you yeah charlotte says she's the same way i need to hear words of affirmation you know i get aroused hearing i know y'all don't care about that but that is aroused arousing to me hearing how i get it done for you why you feeling me Right. I need to know those things. I, I may I may know them 
But sometimes we're insecure and we forget them. If no one tells me I'm funny, I forget that my jokes are funny. If no one tells me that I'm smart, I forget that I'm smart. I need to hear it. If I'm considerate, I need you to say, babe, I really appreciate you being considerate of my family. Right. I know there are a lot, but you entertain them. I appreciate it. That's all I need. Play. How many of y'all like me? That's all I need. Just open up your mouth and communicate with me. Right. Uh, Shanae said lazy communication going to run me off. But words are my love language. Right. You know, bam, y'all get it. And then here's number four. What does trust mean to you? What does trust and fidelity mean to you? What does faithfulness mean? What does trust mean? I need to know. I need to know, first of all, are you trustworthy? Tell me about your past relationships and what trust means to you and trustworthiness, right? I need to know what that means. That means, so this this, this can open up uh, 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 so many different things. Um, uh, does trust mean you trust me as far as you can see me? Or does trust mean you can trust me in ambiguous situations? Do you trust? Do you naturally distrust? Are, are trust people. I need to know if you see me talking to another woman and I hug her, are you going to immediately distrust me? Are you going to trust me and give me the benefit of the doubt and ask, maybe that's my cousin. Maybe that's my homie. What's one of my, well, maybe that's one of my homies who's, who's I'm praying for. Um, and when you come up, you're going to read the situation, right? I know y'all like, hold on, that don't sound right, right? You don't need to hug anybody you're praying for. Maybe I do. It depends on who it is, but you need to fill out the room. Right. What is your background with trust? Have people treated you right? And you going into this mostly trusting. Right. Are you going into this because you've been mishandled, mostly distrusting? Have you worked through that? Let's have a conversation about trust. This is going to be a conversation he or she wants to have, too. They're going to be like, oh, I'm ready to have this conversation. Right. When you're mad, can you stay loyal? Right. Um, uh, can you trust with money when you don't understand? Do, can, can you fall back? To a man that has means and allow him to handle a situation without you all up in the Kool-Aid, right? Or do you need to be integrated into that? Do you need to say no, right? I need to I need to know what we're doing because I want to be a, a, a co-contributor to solving the problem. I don't want to be laid back. Let's have a conversation about trust or it just depends on the matter. It depends on our, uh, on our title. Are we talking about my husband, my wife, or are we talking about my boyfriend, my fiance? What are we talking about? Right. What, 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 we, what are we talking about? So, so, so trust. Right. I need to know what trust is. Like, what does that mean? Because some people can say you don't trust me and they use that as a form of a manipulation and they don't want to communicate. And then there are other times where we're so anxious that we don't know how to we don't know how to trust anyone because maybe you've been in a relationship where the people you've trusted have done you wrong. Can we just open up and sort of fight each other in this gender war? Can we open up and admit that we all been hurt? And there's a lot of stuff on, 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 on my sisters, a lot of stuff on my brothers and that we've been through stuff. And let's handle each other gently. But let's make sure that it is a fit so that when we date, when we connect, even if we need to make pivots in our relationship, our marriage, that we understand that trust may not be that easy or, or it might be easier for you than for me because you had the blessing of having trustworthy people, whereas one person didn't. Let's do it the right way. All right, number five, um, because I'm a man of faith and you can remix this, but I'm a man of faith, all right? I need to know what you believe about God. I don't need to know that if you believe in God, I need to know what you believe about God. I need to know, but uh, this is for me. And I know a lot of my followers are believers, but you know, I am respectful, all right? I need to know what you, I need for, and I want you to personalize this for you. I need to know what you believe about God, but you can say, I need to know what you believe about spirituality. I need to know what you believe about Allah. I need to know what you believe about Jehovah. What Fill in the blank about whatever you want to do because we're trying to find out your spiritual development. If we're talking about blending. Aren't we blending specially? I mean, spiritually? I need to know what you believe in God. Do you do you believe that all pastors are, are, are praying on? Do you believe in the word of God? Do you believe in God, but you have some issues with some pastors and the church? Do you believe that God is the head of our household? So that means if I'm submitting to him, you're not really submitting to me. You're submitting to the God in me. Right. And it's mutual submission. That's another question to ask about what kind of love are you and what kind of trust you. What's your what's your what? Let's talk about submission and respect and what that means mutually. What does that mean? Right. Uh, do you what do you believe about God? Do you believe that God is just like the Easter Bunny and, 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 and Santa Claus? Are you to believe that, that there is a God in your life? 
that knows exactly what we need? And can we both defer to him when we disagree and just every day? Are you open? Because I'm a, I'm a man of faith, right? Are you open to having Bible study with a brother? Are you open to fasting and praying? Are, are you open to um, uh, going to church? Are you open to, let, let's just say, I've, I've, I've seen, I've counseled couples of different religions. Um, man might be a, a nation uh, of Islam and, and wife might have grown up. Christianity, you know, that's a no-no, right? That's a no-no, right? One Jehovah Witness, other one's not. You're not even supposed to be communicating according to one of those it, it, with Jehovah Witness. You know, they're not even supposed to be in community, right? But you still found in love. How do you negotiate that? What do you believe? What, what, what do we do about that so that we can come together under God if that is your belief? How do we move together? Even if we have differences of opinion, Right. Like, do you respect that? Are you just going to bang me upside the head with God? Right. You're going to quote scriptures. Or are you going to say I have some questions? Right. Am I allowed to have questions? Am I allowed to, to, to ask some questions about what I read? Or do I have to just be just believe it because that's what you say? Come on, let's talk about it. Right. Let 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 let's let's do it. it says in the social media world, I need I need someone to have these questions asked. Right. And someone says you have to give me a reason not to 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 trust you. Right. Someone saying, yeah, this is the you know, I need to know I dated a minister. Right. So um, and if someone says, is it OK for a man or I, I'm an ad woman to not be religious? It depends on what fits for you. Do you want what I want? Right. Do you want what I want? Are we a fit for each other? Now, there are a lot of times people, there are a lot of times people um, are, op it's this thing called nuns, N-O-N-E-S, nuns, where there's a large body of people, especially here in America, that don't believe in anything. None. I don't believe in none. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not anti-God. I'm not pro-God. I don't, I don't really believe in anything. I just believe in treating people right, uh, eating the right foods, being healthy, and being spiritual. They don't really believe in anything, right? So they're called, they're categorized as nuns. I'm nothing. I don't mean that in a negative way, but you can't box me into something. Well, there's someone that might identify as a nun, right? Or just believing, but they're open. Hey, I've never been to this kind of church. I like the way your pastor. All right. When that pastor started talking about, you know, uh, you know, mutual submission, where it says in the Bible, if you go back and you read the book of Ephesians says submit yourselves one to another. Right. Uh, we start looking at the qualifications for submission that a man has to treat his wife as he would treat himself, that he has to actually treat his wife like Christ treats the church. Well, what woman would have a problem respecting a man that treated her like Christ treats the church or treats her like he treats himself if he treats himself well and then mutual submission in the word what do we what do we believe right like what do we believe like you can have these conversations up front early on in the relationship or maybe you need to have them now because you're like I need to ask my I need to ask my husband right you know and someone says hey as, as long, well, if you believe you're a christian or you're a muslim or you're jehovah Witness, as long as he loves me i'm good with it so i'm trying to tell y'all we are not monolithic right I meaning like we don't all believe one thing right like there's people that's like no that's a deal breaker for me we don't share the same religion it's a deal breaker and there's someone that says hey it depends right and we need to find the person for you and this is what's helping you to do that right someone that says it's a deal breaker if you don't have an active fellowship with god that's a deal breaker right with someone else that may not be a deal breaker. Do you, are you moral? Do you are you open to receiving Christ in your life? Are you are, are, are someone else might say, are you open to seeing a different way of life? All right. Yeah, we can do it. These are the questions you need to ask. Are Y'all getting it? That's why friendship is so important. Right. I'm reading it. Someone says, um, uh, Sahar says this is why Sahar the Star says this is why friendship is so important. You have to get to know people first, y'all. They say relationships are friendships on fire. So we get together too fast. We have lust for one another, strong like a girl. I like the, I like the way you look at them jeans and the way you talk back to me. That's enough to get me, y'all. Y'all know I'm dramatic, right? Oh, I, li I like that talk back. I do. I do like drama. My wife is from Inglewood by way of South Central. I wouldn't have it any way, other way. Her name is Mecca, Mecca Sierra. Right. You know, you get what I'm saying. I, I like that. You might like what you like. Right. Uh, but that ain't going to get it. I have been there before. Well, I like the same thing. And then sister girl didn't know how to communicate when she was talking. I'm not talking about my wife, but I'm saying then you, you're arguing, then you're yelling. And then you know what? If, if Usher comes up on the scene, you know, it loyal trust depends. It depends. Right. Do you want what I want? It depends if I can upgrade from you, if you're the best I can do. 
And let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it 100, right? Let's keep it 100. Someone said body, mind, and spirit. If you can't talk about it all, we don't need to be in a relationship. That doesn't work for me. Can you get it? So these are the questions you ask up front. That doesn't mean that we're checking off a list of someone being perfect man or perfect woman. I'm just trying to find chemistry. I'm just trying to find fit. But what I'm really looking for is if we disagree, can we have a meaningful conversation when we come to the middle where you feel me, that, that God is important to me, right? And I come to the middle as to why you distrust, you know, God. Did, have you ever been introduced to him? Has, has someone um, um, taken advantage? um of you right there are priests out there that do the wrong thing all right okay that's a different conversation if that was your only exposure uh to christ was a priest who violated your boundaries we're gonna have that's a whole nother conversation versus you don't love god right um paula said my husband and i were friends forever before we got married right all right let's get to number six because i promise you eight and i'm gonna get y'all out here on time uh six how do you handle conflict Oh, that's a good one. That might be number one. How do you handle conflict? And I would leave that open. Don't even give them categories. Don't say, do you cool down? Do you get mad? Just say, how do you handle conflict? We want to know what you do well. I would ask them, give, give me an example of when you have conflict in a romantic relationship and how you handled it. Tell me. Now, someone has never handled conflict well, they are not going to be able to make up something that's going to be plausible. They're going to try, but you're going to see right through it. Right. Uh, and then, two, I want to know what needs work. Come on, y'all. We're going to have a little therapy session. Uh, what do you do well when it comes to conflict? Right now, write this down, drop it in the chat. What do you do well when it comes to conflict? That's going to be the first question. All right. I'll tell you what I do well. I'm one of those people that if we have an argument, I am going to think of every possible solution to solve it. You're not going to have to come find me to do a repair attempt. I'm going to come find you. So, hey, baby, you know what? When I was thinking, we were arguing about what to do with the kids on the weekend and we had difference of opinion. You know what? I called three people and they gave me a different perspective. And I like to talk about those three perspectives with you to see if we can come up with a deal. I'm trying to resolve the conflict quickly. I'm going to come. I'm going to approach you. I'm going to find you. I'm going to spend the time that we're you're spending cooling off or not talking about it, finding solutions. I'm really good at that. I'm not going to just let it sit. I'm going to try to solve it. OK, what are you good at? And then also what needs work? All right. Now, someone said I'm good at calm. I'm, I'm good at being calm. Oof, that's what I'm not good at. All right, I need to work on being calm. Matter of fact, y'all, y'all hold me accountable. Y'all send me DMs. Y'all send me texts for those of you that have my cell. You know, whatever social media you follow me on, DM me and ask if I have signed up for my yoga class, y'all. Don't let me slide on that. I need to be calmer. It is important to my entire family. It is important how I relate to them. I want to be calm. I want to be composed. And that is not my natural aura. Y'all see all this passion? This this is cool for, for, for what y'all watching. This is cool for entertainment. Can you imagine dealing with this all day? You'd be like, that might be a little intense. And I want to be intense when it's time to be intense. And I want to be calm when it's good for my family. I want to set the temperature in my house uh, in, a, in a way in which everyone in my house, including my two daughters and my son, can receive it. All right. So BJ uh, for DST, thank you for that. Chris, I try to see things from the other person's point of view. Right. That's what he's saying. I want to see things from your point of view. I want to get you. I don't I'm not trying to agree with you. That's what Chris said. I'm just trying to feel you. I just need to feel where you come from. How can I have an opinion on what we're going to do before I feel y'all? I mean, that's Farmer Noob right there. Y'all give him his credit. Right. Um, uh, I, I see my brother A.G. said, hey, we're good at having those weekly meetings and making the adjustments. That's called that's called a state of the union meeting. Right. Where we sit down and say, hey, what's working for our relationship? And we start with the positive. And then what needs to what needs to 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 shift? So if you're having that like weekly or at least twice a month or at least once a month, you don't wake up one day and your relationship just went to the toilet. All right. Surprisingly, you're actually talking about these things real time. It's like a sports team. You down 10 time out. We're up 15 time to celebrate. Right. Uh, Sheena says, I express my feelings at the right time. Right. Good with communication. Right. No, I did not say I'm a noob. 
I, I farmer noob. My buddy Chris is a noob. No, the cappers don't come from me. I did not false claim. I did not false claim, right? I am not Greek, but I support all this, the fraternities and sororities. But no, I can't say yo. My brother is. I can't do it. I have too much respect for y'all. And I know y'all find me in these lean, mean streets. <laughs> all right. So yeah, uh, so Morlika says she likes uh, family meetings, right? So, so, so you get it. All right. Uh, someone said, I, I noticed uh, you get a better response from men when you get quiet, not when you're yelling at them. All right. You want a man's attention to get real quiet. Right. If you want your man's attention, get real quiet. That works. That works the other way around, too. Right. Um, women don't like to be yelled at either. Matter of fact, if you are her protector and you're yelling, who protects her from us? That's why I'm doing the yoga piece. I want to convey calmness. I want that Obama calmness. I want to be strong, but I also want to be calm, right, when I'm communicating things. I don't want to say how many times I have to tell you to put that up. My face gets me in problem, in, in trouble. It's not necessarily my voice. It's my face, but my tone can be a problem too, right? And like I said, you know, how you handle conflict? I'm, I'm going to go do the proactive fixing of what needs to be fixed. You're not going to have to tell me to go to yoga class because you need me to stay cool, calm, and collect and keep the temperature down. I'm already researching that and going on social media and asking my buddies to hold me accountable. All right? What I need to work on is the patience, in, interrupting, you know? Uh, all that's going to be helped. Listen, y'all, I'm not here to tell y'all I'm perfect. Matter of fact, I'm very cool with being transparent so that you can be modeling. I can show you better than I can tell you. And we're not going to do things perfectly regardless of your title. But once your partner tells you what doesn't work for them, once your kids tell you what does not work for them, once you tell them what doesn't work for you, can we both be actively making the necessary changes so that we can have a dope life together without all the strife and the struggle? Do we have to lift a thousand pounds together? Can we just lift eight? So can it just be easy lifting in a relationship? You feel me? Do, do what you need to do to get better at conflict. Find out if they're good at conflict. And then his last question, this is off part number six. If you're not good at it, what will you do about it? Will you go take conflict resolution class? Will you go talk to someone about how to express your emotions? You know, will you, will you go take a yoga class? Will you meditate? Will you exercise? Or if you need to speak up and have more passion because you're the detached type. Some of y'all are detached. You can't hurt a feeling I refuse to have about you. The minute that trip wire goes off, we're about to have an argument. Your defense mechanism is I don't care what you say. You can't hurt me. So I don't care. I'm detached. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to freeze. I'm going to sur game over. Right? That detachment. Right? You can't do that either. Because then you show the person, you don't, I really don't care about you. I get it's a defense mechanism, but can you speak up and communicate how you feel with some passion so that I know that you want to be here versus saying, oh, matter to me. It's whatever you want to do. It's all good. I don't want to talk about it. Are you going to sign? Come on. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So yelling and shutting down is just opposite ends of, 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 of a sword that's hurting your relationship. You can't shut down and be cool and detached and not care. That's different from being cool, calm, and collect and caring, but trying to keep yourself in the box of healthy relationship. You know, don't detach where you don't care. Like you're talking to your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, like they just some dude, a woman off the street. Really? We're talking about a relationship, you have no emotion? That's different from being calm. Someone said their spouse is so calm and patient. I really admire that about him. That's a good match for her. Right. And I see here the noops going back and forth talking about talking about, you know, when they pledge and where they are. And y'all should do that. That's what I like about it is building uh, community. Right. Building community. All right. Number seven. Uh, oh, someone says I don't do yoga because yoga is a religion. You know, what? there are definitely people that 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 uh, it, that's, a, that's a good point that will uh, worship Buddha. Uh, but you can also integrate meditation, mindfulness, and yoga, and also be a believer. That is a good point, right? You don't have to, um, and I'm, you know, I'm a, you don't have to to to, to worship Buddha uh, to do yoga. You just have to practice your breath work and being calm. And what I do a lot of times is I pray when I am doing meditation, y'all. Just just find a bridge. But I respect. See, this is respect. I respect where this person is coming from. And so if I'm in a relationship and this is a woman, I'd say, well, let's go meditate. Let's go do silent prayer. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to do anything that's offensive to you. But on my own time, I'm going to go, you know, do yoga. But we're going to also honor our religion. All right. Number seven, 
Um, how do you balance work, family, and marriage? I didn't know how you balance those things. And this 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 list of eight is not comprehensive because I'm thinking of some right now, right? You know, and I'm I'm gonna add it on to it, you know. Um, but this this is eight good questions to ask when you're dating, right? So number seven is how do you balance work, family, and marriage? All right, let me share this fact with y'all because I know we're coming up on time. Men who make cognitive room for their marriages and relationships have better relationships and marriages. Now, what does that mean? That means that when I make room in my brain, cognitively, cognition, for my marriage, my marriage exists in real life. My relationship exists in real life. I'm going to have a better relationship and marriage. That means I'm scheduling date nights. It can't just be work. I have to work, 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 work. I'm tired, 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 tired. You know, I have to make sure I take care of the people I'm in relationship with. I've made room for it. It exists. It's scheduled. There's date night, which means I can't work on date night, right? I might be able to work before or after date night, right? But I can't do that. I'm never going to work after date night, y'all, for obvious reasons. You get what I'm saying? But are you able to balance? Do you believe that family comes before marriage? It cannot. I know that's controversial, but if if we don't get along and we're the we're the we're the, the the two managing partners in this relationship, doesn't the family break anyway? So so we have to make sure that we're good as the family. First of all, I'm good. I'm 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 good with God. You're good with God, whomever you believe in, right? And then we come together, right? And then we're good. And then everyone that's leaning on us, family, right? Then they're good. But if the foundation is broken, we're focusing so much on our sons, our daughters, Facebook, social media work how are we gonna be good right as men this this it used to be we just bring home the bacon right it's not even good for your heart so i'm not gonna say that we bring home the seafood bring home the plant-based uh, vegetarian the dash diet mediterranean diet whatever it is we bring home the the, the food is gonna keep you healthy black folks and if you're watching you a different persuasion you need to be healthy too right i love everyone well i don't love everyone that's not true i'm not gonna even say that there's some people i i'm working on i'm, I'm working on it right there's some walks of life Ah, God has to love you. I'm trying to get there. All right, but I'm not going to say I'm open to, to, to everything. I'm not. I'm just respectful. But I do draw the boundaries on what I need to draw the boundary on. All right. Are you able to balance? Are you able to put us first and the kids? Let's not make it or. Let's do and. Can you balance me and work? Can you balance me and your parents? Can, can we love each other enough to realize that maybe we do need to spend more time with the parents and integrate that because they're older. They're getting up there in age, right? What do you believe specifically around marriage and relationships? Like, what's your order? Do you believe in keeping it real? Do you believe in getting us straight? Like, if we're not, we're not finna talk about family if we're not straight. We're not finna talk about the cousins coming over if we're not straight. Yeah, we can't be so busy we're not doing marriage. And that's what's killing relationships and marriage. It's probably the number one is that you're in marriage and you're ignoring your spouse. You're using your phone. I was about to grab it, but I forgot I'm on it. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm using my phone to ignore you. How that's going to work. I'm spending more time at church work than spending time with my wife, my husband, my man, my fiance, the woman I, I beg for attention. Right now I'm texting her back two times a week. No, that's not going to work. Men that make room, women too. Now you can it's good. also it's about really getting, like we talked about men, but it's really about providers. And now that more women are, are providing. Right. You can get caught up in that, too. Do you reserve room in your relationship for me? You ain't you, I ain't signed up to be ignored. I'm, I'm not going to be second to work. I know there are times in which you get busy, but not not fundamentally second to work. Once one, one work is done, then it comes out of the one. No, no, because I'm not going to treat you like that. Hold me accountable. No, I'm not going to spend all the time with the kids and no time with you. Right. I don't care if it's a blended family, biological family, adopted family, foster care. I don't care. We just pay attention to one another. So let's make sure that we are doing that and everything else. Don't make it an or. Our God is abundant. He can, we can spend time. We just have to schedule it. And everyone's winging. Not everyone. A lot of people are winging their relationship. You're winging your relationship. You just have date night whenever it comes up. People are too busy for that, right? No, let's schedule it and do some spontaneous dates. I don't want dates. That's, that's all, all of them are planned. What, what fun is that? Right? Some of them need to be spontaneous. All right, number eight, last one. Um, how do you, this is a question I said I was going to ask, you know, how do you maintain good mental health and make sure that you're good so that you're good to me and yourself? How do you maintain good mental health? How many of y'all ever been 
in a relationship with someone and their their uh, mental health deteriorated. Maybe there was a loss in the family, went through depression, anxiety, bipolar, um, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, schizophrenia, whatever it might, you know, stress. Let's just keep it kind of most common. And, and how they were stressed or depressed or anxious didn't work for you. They, they, didn't go, they wouldn't go to counseling. They wouldn't meditate. They wouldn't go to yoga. They wouldn't pray. They wouldn't go to a counselor. They won't go to their pastor. They won't take time off work. They won't go to a retreat. They won't do anything. They won't walk with their shoes off and ground themselves. Nothing. You don't do anything. You don't pray. You don't fast. You don't, you don't need some time. You don't go talk to a friend. You don't have a wellness circle with your buddies. You don't go out to dinner and say, well, you don't do anything. I need to know because that's what I was telling you. Had I with this particular young lady, and I've done this multiple times as a psychologist, I've dated women that did not have adequate mental um, well-being strategies in place. So everything's cool and then something happened and then it just crashed and burned. I'm not here to fix you. I'm not your psychologist and you're not my psychologist. And I'm here to support you as your man. Right. I'm here to support you. But when you have mental health challenges, are you willing to go get help? In a place that's effective. You can't tell me I'm not going to go to counseling. OK, fine. Where are you, where are you going to go then? Because this you're not going to drink and, and have an attitude with me. You're not going to be so stressed. You can't have sex with me because your libido is low. You're not going to be snappy and argumentative to, with me over a long period of time because you're dealing with work stress because you're going through racism. Right. Uh, or your money's not right. Right. Go fix that My, while dating me, while being married to me. Go, go do that. Don't, no, no. If you don't believe in that, uh-uh, X. That's for me, y'all, because I've been the ex. If you don't have good mental health practices and you're not open to having mental health practices and self-care so that you don't self-destruct and bleed on me and our kids, I in the future kids, mm, what that emoji? Put that emoji up. Where, where, that, where is that? Can't do it. I love you. I can't bring the work home. I can't be your psychologist. I can't. I'm gonna be bad at it. I ain't gonna be. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna even be a good psychologist to you because I'm, I'm too busy being your man. You'd be better off dating someone else because I'm in it. I'm subjective. Your psychologist wants what's best for you, but I'm, I'm gonna have secondary gain. I'm gonna be wanting you to get better for me, right? So that doesn't work, right? And so I, I see y'all chiming in before I let y'all go. Like if you're not making time for me, um, then that means you really don't want me. Sometimes. Some people just need the boundary to be enforced. If you don't want to spend time with me, I'm not going to warm up your plate. I'm not going to keep having sex with you. I'm not going to keep acting like everything is cool. I'm not. You can't just tap me on the leg in the middle of the night and you're not romancing me. I want to feel like making love, not be obligated. You can't have everything you want because you have open access to the credit card. You can't. Hey, it don't work that way. You got to ask me. What's going on? How I feel versus you just going out and getting these purchases without asking. Now, I don't mean like for permission, but being on the same page about what our financial goals are. Come on now. Thank you for those emojis. Right. All right. I'm going to say this, y'all. Boundaries. If you haven't read a book called Boundaries, I need to set a boundary uh, where we are. Um, after date night comes dessert, I feel you. Right. Um, let's look at some of these comments. Right. Um Someone had anger management classes and is in jail. Y'all been through it. Y'all understand. Boyfriend went to jail for bipolar episode. Like, like why? Like Gucci Man, and he's on the record, right? Gucci Man's mental health improved when he went to jail and listened to his wife about taking his medication. Gucci's life has elevated. And their brothers, who I will not name, right, that did not take their uh, did not take adequate care of their mental health. They'd rather just hide it, show no vulnerabilities, and not fix it, and blow up everything around them. They've blown up the wife. They've blown up the husband, blown up the fiance, blown up the business, blown up the relationship with the children, all because you can't help your temper. When your temper is manifested out of a mood disorder, you refuse to even go get a consult with. You won't take medication, and you won't even meditate. You do nothing. You won't do either. I know this is bad English, but you won't do neither. That's a double negative for the English teachers out there. You won't do neither. You won't meditate. You won't do yoga. You won't do prayer. You, you won't do breath work. And you won't go get therapy. And you don't want medication. So basically, you just want to self-destruct and, and be a self-destructing bomb on me. And I just got to get blown up because I'm in your vicinity. I'm in a relationship with you. I'm connected to you. No. 
Remember that show 24? No, I'm not trying to have 24 hours run out and die because you won't go do the right thing. Uh Uh-uh. I need you to love yourself and me enough to go do the hard work, to go unpack what happened with your mom or your dad or your exes or this crazy, savage world we all live in. I don't care where you tuning in for. Life is real right now. Life is life and for everyone. Whatever you're dealing with, whether it's grief, loss, go get the support you need so that when you come to me, I don't have to do so much heavy lifting. And I'm going to do the same thing for you. Y'all got it? It's hard. I get it. It's hard. But don't try to suck it up and then throw up all on me. I know it's hard losing mom. It's hard losing grandma. It's hard losing siblings. It's hard losing children. It's hard being in a a racist company, but you need to check. It's hard being an entrepreneur, and the answer is you You need to expand, but you don't have the money to expand, but it's working you to death. If you don't stop working to death, you don't have a heart issue, but if you spend the money, the money it, it, life is life in y'all. That's why we need to come together and partner and pray for one another and be there for one another. Y'all got it, y'all. So listen, I hope y'all enjoyed this, the eight questions to ask when dating men and women to avoid getting hurt. Write these things down. Ask yours. And the bonus one, I want to know what kind of lover you are physically. Now, once we're in a committed relationship, I want to know, are you a lover? Like, what kind of lover are you? What do you believe in intimacy? How often would you like to be with a brother? Do you believe in initiation? Do you, do, do, do you believe in a foreplay? Do you believe in variety in our own house? I don't believe in variety outside of our house. Like, let's keep it spice. I want to know what you believe. I want to know. We can we can have that conversation when you get engaged and you get married, right? If y'all grown, you can have it every time you want to. I need to know. Are you a selfish lover? Is it all about you? Or are you trying to make sure I'm good and you good? Because I'm trying to make sure you good and you trying to make sure you good. Who makes sure I'm good? How that's going to work? If both of us focus on you, how that's going to Anyway, y'all got it. All right. I love y'all. I'll see y'all soon. All right. Make sure y'all check out my website, drtart.com. Uh, Click that subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube. You're not watching this on YouTube. That's where a lot of magic happens. Go over there and watch these videos. That's where they're saved. Uh, You can watch them anytime, and then we are good to go. And for those of you that want dating advice for singles, go to ringformula.com right now. Ringformula.com. Ringformula.com. We start our next cohort of helping women get in healthy relationships ASAP. All right. Excited about it. Thank you, Roller Girl, for the for the for the badge. Thank you for what you're doing for the contribution. All right. And I'll see you all. And I'm going to start doing this at least once a week. Uh, I had a month that was crazy, crazy good. I have a lot of good announcements. Y'all, I've done some work with Kurt Franklin, done some work with David Mann, Israel Halton, Lance Gross, uh, Anthony Evans. Getting ready to do some work uh, prayerfully with Bishop T.D. Jakes. It's a lot of positive things happen happening in, in my life. And the rest I can't even say. There's some good stuff that's, that's, that's contractually obligated to say nothing. So God is good. So I thank y'all. But this is why I do it for you all, the people. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And whomever you support. All right.